Kantorke ist Kantorke is a certified RC3 teleshopping ultra from Hamburg. When I'm calling him a uh, really old member of the Hamburg CCC scene, that is not even enough. He is working on Freifunk. He is, um, which you can see under hamburg.freifunk.net. He is operating tour nodes and is also involved with Reclaim Your Face, which is written in one word, .eu. Behind Public Transit 2.0 is uh, something where he, because of a vulnerability, looked into the backend of one of the systems. And so the stage is yours, Kantorke. Welcome to my talk. Together we are going to look behind the scenes of Public Transport 2.0. The usage of the public transport needs to become easier. For example, if I want to get from A to B in Hamburg, then I need to uh, choose my ticket before I want to ride, and I also want the ideally the cheapest one. And I have the choice between various cards, one-day cards, individual cards, group cards, four-times cards, sometime cards, maybe there are sh short distances, maybe only long-distance tickets. And all of those are only valid for different zones within the city with uh, between one and four, six rings, and uh, I can also get some extension tickets. For this, I need to know which exact zones or rings are relevant for me. Two of those are also relevant for time ticket uh, uh, users, and some of them are not even visible in this map. So. If I don't even know before I want to take my ride, it's um, very improbable that I'm going to buy a week ticket, even though if maybe after the week it might turn out that uh, it would have been cheaper for me to get this week ticket. The entire problem has a name. It's called a uh, tariff jungle, um, which is uh, called if uh, the if the ticket and prices and fees for a service are very complicated. So we need an app that will direct us through this jungle, and um, ideally works for multiple um, transport authorities. And they um, have these systems that uh, will enable you to use the transit system without previously buying a ticket. It will be evaluated after you ride what you used. And uh, some systems can also uh, group multiple rides uh, over a week. And um, then the, the end of the ride is detected automatically. There are also check-in and check-out systems or B&B &B out systems where you might uh, not have to do anything during check-in and check-out. This is BIBO. Or maybe you need to uh, do something in the app, with, which would be the CI, CIO system. So I've looked at the app from uh, Osnabrück which is called Yannick, um, which is supposed to make things simple and safe. So here we see two screenshots from the app. If I am at my starting station and uh, want to climb to the bus, I will swipe the check-in button to the right, which uh, means I am checked in. And thanks to Bluetooth beacons, it will automatically detect once I've uh, jumped off the bus. The lines and uh, stations are collected on the back end and also correlated to the smartphone's GPS data. How this looks can, uh, could be uh, looked into further using a vulnerability in the system, uh, in a development system, pre-projection system, and now we'll have a look into it. I think this is going to be quite interesting, uh, the entire process uh, around um, 
around uh, signaling to the authorities that the vulnerability was here was actually very good. So I have uh, added a test user to the system, and now we're going to log in. On the left side, we have a menu where we will click through in a few minutes. Here you can see the number of successful requests within the last week. And in the top right, we can see that the test user has been added to a few groups. And now we will change to the role of the uh, city operationals of Osnabrück. So now we will look at ticket area and trips. So we'll see that all of the rides that have been taken on the 13th of November, we uh, see a universal ID, the line of the bus line, the number, the names of start and end station. We can see in the stations that were uh, passed. And here we can't only see that uh, this ride in, on itself will cost two euros and 70 cents, but we can also see that uh, for the entire week an optimized price of 10 euros and 80 cents was calculated, that which would be four rides. And uh, for this we see in the second uh, line, the light gray one, there was a, a week card for 18 euros and 70 cents calculated, uh, and the individual ride was 2 euros and 70 cents. It looks like maybe in the future or in a productive um, uh, in a production system uh, there might also be some fraud detection, but that doesn't work in the system. And what we can also see here about the, the some information about the devices used, some Android and Apple devices. And the version number of the app, and uh, some further info about the phones that were used, the exact operating system version, and some information about the connection quality. What can also be displayed is uh, various check-in and check-out events. For every ride that is taken, one can see when exactly the manual check-in happened. In this in this submenu, we can see the exact rights in an anonymized fashion. There's no pseudonym here, but this is only which line was used, how long the ride was, how many stops there were in between, and the beginning and the end, which was rounded to full hours. And here we can also see for every registered user what time range, also rounded to an hour, they were active in, within the app. I can also display some information about the Bluetooth beacons, the distributed ones. I can see the various uh, vehicles and uh, the IDs of the beacons that are deployed. And uh, using the submenus, I can also display more information about each beacon, such as the remaining battery life. Yeah. 
Jetzt wird es langsam interessanter. And now we get to some more interesting stuff. We can see the suspect movements here. For the 11th of November, I can see all the users that on this day used the system and in, in which hours they did and they were active. So for every user we have a line here in this table, a row, and these uh, there are these um, purplish rectangles which uh, are 24 individual lines and every line is representing one hour of the day and if during an hour the person was active in the public transit, then this line is uh, colored in a certain way. So I see that some users take only one ride per day, then we have a few that take two rides or three. And we have some user that I sort out who is doing frequent trips. Trips. There's an activity around midnight in this log, as well as in the uh, morning and afternoon, lunchtime to afternoon. So let's look at this more closely. Here we see some more detailed device logs, and first in these rows we have various individual check-in and check-out events or be-out events. There's one just after midnight, so two minutes and 24 seconds after midnight, uh, which uh, at which point a check-out apparently occurred was recorded and then for about seven hours, almost seven hours, there was nothing. So after a somewhat short night, that person went back on their way. And across the day, there are further check-in and check-out events. And in between, probably when uh, they changed into, at intersections, there are so-called scan gaps. And uh, the first is just after seven o'clock, where after 426 seconds, a scan gap was noted. It gets more interesting if we project this onto a map where we get a better feel where the person have had moved in the city. We see the check-in and check-out events, which I can click on. And I see an event from the 11th of November at 11 o'clock, 11 minutes and 11 seconds when the person was checked in. I can also uh, seek out the stop name. So this is Sudhausen Mitte in the Osnabrück region or in the city limits still. And I can get further information from the other events as well. And there are a few other log messages that have been plotted here over time. So the horizontal axis is time, and this is a segment of about 24 hours, and every dot represents a log message. There are bug and info logs in here as well. And if I hover over these and any of these dots with the mouse, I can get some more info. This, for, uh, this as I said, is not a productive system. And so maybe the productive system has much less information and fewer events.
Ja, ganz unten sehe ich jetzt noch mal die Yes, and at the very bottom I see the various check-in and check-out events over time. So the person for eight or nine times within this 24-hour period Uh, they were on their way eight or nine times and uh, around midnight and starting again at seven up to around 2 p.m. and then uh, for the f few further journeys up to sometime in the late night. And in the line above, trip stops half us. I can see the stops and intermediate stops of each journey as well. We'll zoom in a bit further now and look at one journey in more detail. Here we have mostly the uh, blue line, uh, which is probably the uh, signal strength of the Bluetooth beacon, the stronger blue line. And the journey began just after 11 and ended at, or ended around a quarter to 12, whereas the, the last stop was noted at around 11.35, which we see in the half hour line further above. Yeah. And at around 11.38, the person probably left the transport vehicle. That's when the last element in the half house line occurs and also the blue line drops off. And it gets even more interesting if I plot all these log message messages on the map too. These are data about the same journey that we seen that we saw earlier. The person left at 10.38 or it is 10.36 here, so there is a one hour offset compared to the diagram above, but this surely is the same journey. And we see that the person left the vehicle, we can see at which stop that occurred. And The log message here shows that the person was probably within the vehicle, vehicle with a confidence of 100. And we can then see where the person went on foot. Let's see the last item here. And this is from 10.48, so about 10 or 10 to 15 minutes, uh, the person was tracked, although they had exited the vehicle much earlier. And again, here is a value that tells you what the person is probably doing, which is to walk with a confidence of 100 again. And just the same, I can look at the other values that are plotted here that are mapped and see what the person was probably doing. And the estimate here is that the person was on a bicycle. The system isn't completely error free here. And yeah, the system sometimes itself says that it doesn't know what is actually happening. But in particular, what's interesting here is that we don't just have the journey itself tracked quite precisely, but also after the journey has ended for more than 10 minutes, the GPS coordinates of that user were phoned home. So if you use this, get off somewhere and then get home within 10 minutes, then the app knows where you live. And that is quite well suited to, let's say, 
retain data on public transport use. If you don't go home directly, but uh, stop off at a pub or bar or something, then the app would notice that as well. Again, the question is whether this only occurs in this development version or whether the productive variant logs this amount of data and stores it as well. And it will also be interesting to know for how long these data are retained. in production. I've shown an example here that didn't make clear that a single house was entered, but I've seen other journeys where the person went to a building quite quickly, quite directly, which apparently wasn't uh, lived in by many people, where not, apparently not many people lived, and you could even notice how that person was moving within that building. And here you see over which period of time the person was moving, what speed was logged, and what the accuracy, the assumed accuracy was about these data. And we also see the user device mapping and information on the selected tariff and more information about the trips or journeys that were happening within the same 24 hours by that same person. At the very bottom, we see on this map uh, which journeys were registered with which intermediate stops and which journeys were billed in the end. And that gets me to the end of this small demo. And finally, I deleted my test user. I then logged out and reported the vulnerability at the companies involved. I can also add that I was surprised how much data this check-in B-out system wants to have in the city of Osnabrück. Exactly, especially these GPS data for 10 to 12 minutes after the end of the journey. That really surprised me. If you are out and about in the city of Osnabrück, please do ask the operator about your data. I wonder if the whole thing uh, can be possible in a privacy-respecting way. Surely it would be possible to build a system like this that would uh, re register and store much less data. But what I find more interesting are other solutions. 
you could come up with more easy tariff systems. For example, if a day ticket would only cost as much as two euros and would be independent of any tariff zones or rings or whatever for all journeys on that day, then we would have gained a lot, I'm sure, and public transport would have become much more attractive to many people. And the uh, idea of having a financed uh, a public transport financed by the community, much more interesting, we have a group called Einfach Einsteigen, uh, Just Hop On would be an English name for that. Um, they have suggested a concept for the city of Bremen, in which a community financed public transport is described the way it could be. So, thanks for watching and listening, and um, now I'll now be available for your questions. Well, warm thanks to this for this fascinating talk to you and for your call in the end against the kind of division politics that divides Germany, Germany up into smaller and smaller units, which has been preserved through German history and is now visible in the kind of patchwork on in tariff systems that we have. I really have to calm down as far as privacy is concerned. And the findings that you've given us here, uh, the small joke that I prepared, if you maybe found an API function to get us a few free tickets, maybe it loses in significance if we look at what you have provided us with here and try to deal with that. There is There are a lot of questions, thanks to the signal angels who actually divided the questions into categories for me. The first question that I really am interested in, and maybe others too, is which companies are involved in this development, in this system? Uh, well, that's actually not that easy to answer. Um, at first, I, I found this vulnerability, and then actually I had to look around for quite a while for whoever's responsible. And in the end, I um, had to report it to the uh, transportation agencies of Osnabrück. Um, but in the back end, there was, were also the locos of various other um, uh, city uh, transport systems. And uh, but I don't know if like they have the same thing. Thank you. Another obvious question: Do you know how long these behavioral patterns of movement profiles are stored? No, I have no idea about that. So uh, that would probably be uh, great if uh, somebody from Osnabrück um, that used this app uh, is listening. They could uh, ask for a copy of the data, and we could find out. Uh, what what is the retention period? Is it six months? Maybe ask again. Maybe declare this as a data donation. That's very interesting. Yeah, so interesting. the people that feel interested now, please do and maybe turn it into a talk next time or contact you. Next question. How about privacy protections about the use within the use of the app? Are there ways? of using it without creating a complete movement profile. Well, I know that there has been some research into the direction of uh, how to build these checkout, check-in or VIP out systems um, that um, provide enough security and of course uh, from the side of the uh, transport agencies they, they do want more data to pre prevent abuse and misuse to some degree but um, it is absolutely possible to um, give more privacy protection than this system does. Um, but um, I don't think that this system is uh, oriented toward data protection. 
hattest. Aber sag, ich hatte gestaunt, dass sogar die Verbleibung... Yes, you said, but I, I was interested that even battery capacity, remaining capacity was recorded, or did I misunderstand that? Of course, then the question is, which individual, which data that, that may be linked to the person are transmitted as well? Just aside from the obvious movement data here, do you know of any other properties in the data that could be related to an individual? Uh, well, not directly, no, but uh, the transport agencies, they um, have only used pseudonyms. We only know about pseudonyms. Of course, at some point, the tickets have to be paid for. And at some point there, of course, there is a connection to the actual name of everyone. So maybe it could be researched whether users are given a new ID at regular intervals? Yeah, maybe. Next question is, as far as you know, is there a, a, a privacy impact assessment by the data protection authorities? I know what the abbreviation means. Privacy impact assessment. The DSFA is a uh, data protection uh, consequence estimation. I don't impact know assessment. if uh, that exists to me. Um, so when, when I found this vulnerability, I didn't know if this was a production system or a development one. So I did not just um, report it to the transport agency, but also to the data protection uh, authorities. So they will probably have a look at it in the future. And then, of course, the production system too. Of course, I'm a simple-minded person. I could imagine that the routines in the debug and info, info modes uh, that the software has, that maybe someone may not have cared about switching all these off, taking them out, but well. <laughs> what I also wondered is, the one tab was titled Suspect Movements. Why? Why? <laughs> yeah, um, I also had to think of a, a Freudian mispronunciation there. So if, if that maybe would be a, a general data retention, but um, yeah, I don't think, I don't know. You said that after leaving the bus or train, it's 10 minutes. What does the app then actually how can it be switched off? You could be standing at the stop for another 10 minutes, and that would be of interest, maybe. But how can... Well, you can certainly just kill the app on your device once you've uh, jumped off the bus. I don't know if that has any influence on the um, fee and fare estimation. I wouldn't have thought that uh, <laughs> gaps in mobile coverage might become a privacy feature in Germany. Um, next question. Can a user access their own data or do you have to uh, ask for it using the GDPR rules? So can we ask the operators? Well, I could not entirely uh, find that out. Uh, I have installed the app for myself, but I wasn't in Osnabrück at the time and wasn't able to buy any tickets. So it, but it didn't look like one could um, very, very easily like get these wonderful maps from the back end. Um, actually, in that case, I don't think it, it suffices to say here are your here's your data and that's it. But, um, but also showing what this data is for and what it looks like and what it means. And that is what these maps provide. Thank you. Maybe this question goes beyond Osnabrück by far. How is, what do you think about privacy protection with apps that are not from the EU? A local traffic authority uses Fairtech from Switzerland, which is not in the EU. I can't really speak to that. Um, I can only comment that this is not the first vulnerability I have found in a mobile ticketing app. It would then be interesting uh, which kind of software modules might be used by various uh, makers, software makers. On a scale from free public transport to subscription trap, 
What is your assessment? How problematic are mobile coverage gaps for the users? Maybe not a privacy question, but just... Well, that's difficult. Um, I don't know if I understood the question correctly. I interpreted this like this. If there are mobile coverage gaps, which of course we know that may, ex that may exist, how reliable do you think these apps would then still be? Uh, well, I think that might be difficult in uh, one of the other place. I know there's a part of the S-Bahn here in Hamburg where they added a um, a noise protection barrier, and since then I have a worse reception there. If uh, maybe if it's done really badly, I, I automatically get checked out there and had to check in again. Do you think that such an app would then try to interpolate or in, in a guess where you are, saying that? you uh, surely didn't exit the train on its journey or, and that could be quite error prone if such estimations or AI predictions are made. Yeah, maybe I don't really know what these uh, GPS coordinates are even safe for, to be honest, especially in Osnabrück. I uh, know that all of these buses have the Bluetooth beacons and with these beacons, the system should know in which buses I'm in. And the system should also know where the bus is, so the system knows where I am riding along and uh, when I get off. So you could, uh, but then again, with Without Bluetooth beacons, you could also do it with just GPS, which might be not as nice. But yeah, that's basically all I can say. Speaking about data minimization, no question. Uh, next question. How can this security, how did the security gap come about? Or how did you gain access? Uh, data better protected in the production system? Well, I was not able to retrieve any data from the production system, and uh, I assume that uh, the reason was a configuration error that allowed me to access data uh, and uh, also from this data then find uh, my way into the backend. Will the system also be used at the Hamburg transport system? Uh, at least this AOS.uptrade is involved here as well. Well, uh, uh, in the backend, uh, I was able to see that there is an HVV uh, menu there. And uh, it, is, the company also said that uh, starting 2022, they do intend to use such a system. And we also had a question about the battery uh, with the beacons there. What, what could that be used for? Well, I don't really know how these beacons work. Um, maybe they're just uh, Bluetooth low energy beacons beacons where once every uh, one or two years you have to change the battery. But um, there are also systems that are directly connected to the power supply of the bus where you of course don't need this. One of many comments. Thank you for this gruesome insight. That's a um, real-time reward feedback linked to a heart for thanks. I think we've covered the questions in the pad and answered them with your help. And I would like to invite you to the breakout room now. And before that, just a few pointers, the link to the breakout room where you could continue the discussion. You can find that link by going to the chat tab. Um, actually, this is...